Sonnengewehr During the summer of 1945, as part of Operation Paperclip, thousands of German scientists were extracted from their homeland to the United States to be interrogated on weapon development. This is how U.S. intelligence learned of an unusual new threat. As it turned out, Adolf Hitler and his loyal entourage had drawn up a plan for a weaponized satellite that could give him the advantage of attacking his enemies from space. This Nazi superweapon called the Sonnengewehr, and known in the West as Heliobeam or Sun Gun, consisted of a large mirror-like surface placed in orbit around the Earth. The weapon was set to focus sunlight to create a highly concentrated beam of photons carrying immense amounts of energy into its target, incinerating it in seconds. The Sonnengewehr's name refers to the Schwarze Sonne, German for Black Sun, or the Sonnenrad, a symbol found in Wevelsberg Castle. The Nazi Sun Gun was not an entirely new concept. Archimedes allegedly used a similar array of mirrors positioned in a particular shape to burn enemy ships during the Second Punic War in 200 BC. Still, the Nazis began considering the idea until 1929, when German physicist Hermann Obert created a detailed plan for a heliobeam that could thaw rivers or illuminate dark surfaces. His plans were transformed by Third Reich scientists at the German Army Artillery, who repurposed it into a conceptual weapon, intended to be part of a gigantic space station orbiting the Earth at 5,100 miles. The weapon, which would measure three and a half square miles in size, would use a reflector made of metallic sodium to procure and focus enough heat to destroy ground structures. Although it never went further than written plans, the United States took the potential threat seriously. Life magazine was the first to reveal the potential danger to the public during the summer of 1945. However, after being questioned by American officers, the Germans claimed that the sun gun would be completed by the Nazis within 50 to 100 years, as the technology of the time made the project unviable. Thankfully, these plans never came to fruition. The Allies' arrival that same year forced the Nazis to cancel their real-life Death Star plans. American strategic defense planners briefly considered the concept of a sun gun for the two decades that followed. They believed that such a device would have immense ramifications, especially for the space race, which spanned from 1955 all the way through 1975. Have Sting During the Cold War, the U.S. poured billions of dollars into secret space weapons through its Star Wars defense program. Very little is known about this program, and information on most of the weapons is still highly classified. The only certainty is that many of these exotic space weapons from the Cold War surpassed even the wildest of imaginations. One of these projects, codenamed Have Sting, proposed constructing the largest gun to ever exist in the solar system. This orbital cannon would have been a giant railgun that could shoot projectiles towards Earth at a speed of 35,000 miles per hour. Instead, the project proposed a turbo generator, fueled by a farm of liquid hydrogen and oxygen tanks, generating 90 megawatts of electricity. Have Sting's proposed targets, its sensor system, and the substance it would have fired at its enemies remains classified, even after several FOIA requests from scientists. The most secretive part of this project was its targeting system, which is still highly classified and was not included in the plan's illustrations. According to aerospace historian Scott Lowther, quote, The sensor systems on this scale are almost never depicted in artwork, yet they would be needed. The targets would be fast-moving, very small, and thousands of miles away. Although great on paper, one of the project's weakest links would have been its refueling logistics. The weapon platform called for shielded, refrigerated liquid hydrogen and oxygen stores for its turbo generator. This would have required constant replenishing, especially if the railgun was being used frequently. There's no evidence that any official work was ever done on this space gun, which was too early for its time. After the signing of the Outer Space Treaty, the development of the project became illegal. Polius. As a response to the American Star Wars program, the Soviet Union urgently prepared a counterattack program to launch a 1MW orbital laser system. This weapon could potentially target and destroy U.S. satellites, rendering any possible Star Wars weapon obsolete. The spacecraft became known as Polius Skiff. Polius is Russian for pole, as in the extremity of an axis or sphere. The word Skiff refers to the Scythians, an ancient tribe of warriors in Asia, and the European equivalent of a barbarian. The project was born after Soviet scientists mentioned the U.S. space shuttle made no economic sense and posed the theory that it could be hiding a weapon ready to take out Moscow at any given time. To counter this imaginary threat, the project, nicknamed the Red Death Star, was rushed into the development phase using spare parts from the Mir-2 space station project. At 121 feet long, over 13 feet in diameter, and weighing 80 tons, the USSR masqueraded the massive weapon as a space station program. 
According to Yuri Korniloff, chief designer of the Salyut Design Bureau, Mikhail Gorbachev visited the Cosmodrome shortly before its launch. The leader of the Soviet Union explicitly forbade the testing of the Polyus in-orbit capabilities. Gorbachev was worried that the Westerners would mistake this activity as a formal attempt at placing a weapon in space. Such action would have contradicted the USSR's previous statements on their peaceful intentions as part of the Outer Space Treaty. The Polyus never made it to space. It was launched May 15, 1987, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome Site 250, but failed to reach orbit. The Polyus's payload was launched upside down for technical reasons, and was supposed to separate from the launching device, rotate 180 degrees in yaw, then 90 degrees in roll, and then fire its engine to complete its boost to orbit. However, after a successful separation, the Polyus rotated a full 360 degrees instead of the planned 180. When its engine fired, it slowed down and ended up burned up in the atmosphere just over the South Pacific Ocean. This massive failure was attributed to a faulty inertial guidance system that had not been rigorously tested due to the rushed production schedule. The project was abandoned instantly. After its cancellation, the Polyus's scraps were reused in other USSR space projects, such as the Kavant 2, Kristall, Spectre, and Priroda Mir modules. WD-1145-017 What is perhaps the largest Death Star in the universe isn't even human-made. In 2015, astrophysicists using the NASA Kepler telescope witnessed, for the first time ever, a solar system being destroyed. According to the event's official report, led by Andrew Vanderberg, a graduate student at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, the strange phenomenon is something, quote, no human has seen before. We are for the first time witnessing a miniature planet ripped apart by intense gravity, being vaporized by starlight and raining rocky material onto its star. During the research process, an international team of astronomers uncovered evidence of a minor planet being torn apart as it spiraled around WD-1145-017, a white dwarf located approximately 570 light-years from Earth in the constellation Virgo. The team of astronomers who worked on WD-1145-017 discovered unusual spectral lines in the light coming from the white dwarf. It also showed the presence of different elements, such as oxygen, iron, magnesium, and silicon, all characteristics of rocky planets. Under normal circumstances, a white dwarf star signals the presence of hydrogen and helium, and any other elements would be drawn into the star by gravity. The official paper, which has now been accepted and published in the Astrophysical Journal, details the first discovery of a white dwarf star attempting to destroy its own planets. Thanks to the study of this phenomenon, astronomers have found 21 other stars doing a similar process, and have collectively spawned a new field of study, necroplanetology. According to Dr. Fergal Mullally of SETI at NASA's AIMED Research Center, the studies of WD-1145-017 are only the beginning for necroplanetology, quote, for the last decade, we've suspected that white dwarf stars were feeding on the remains of rocky objects, and this result may be the smoking gun we're looking for. However, there's still a lot more work to be done figuring out the history of this system. Picture A According to the official NASA Chandra X-ray Observatory, quote, The Star Wars franchise has featured the fictitious Death Star, which can shoot powerful beams of radiation across space. The universe, however, produces phenomena that often surpass what science fiction can conjure. The statement was proven correct in 2016, after the observatory released pictures of Picter A, a double-lobed, broadline radio galaxy with the potential to wipe out entire solar systems. This galaxy contains a supermassive black hole at its center. A large amount of gravitational energy is released as material swirls toward the event horizon, the point of no return for infalling material. This energy then produces an enormous beam, or jet, of particles, traveling at nearly the speed of light into intergalactic space. To obtain images of this strange galaxy, NASA scientists relied on the Chandra X-ray Observatory for over 15 years. NASA's X-ray data was combined with radio data from the Australia Telescope Compact Array to complete the picture. By studying the structure's details, American scientists seek to gain a deeper understanding of these massive collimated blasts. New data from Chandra suggests that Picter A actually emits two separate beams from its black hole center. One of them, named the Counterjet, is harder to distinguish mostly because it moves away from Earth's line of sight. Although tentative evidence for this counterjet has been previously reported, Chandra's photos in 2016 confirmed its existence. The main beam is pointed roughly in the direction of Earth. Thankfully, our planet is out of danger, as Pictor A is safely 500 million light-years away. <laughs>